I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzyme Mental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to tell you guys about quercetin. So quercetin is a bioflavonoid that has antihistamine, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant properties. You find it primarily in plant foods, especially in red and yellow onions, apple skins, red grape skins, and many kinds of berries, but also citrus fruits like grapefruit, buckwheat, tea, and even red wine. Quercetin has also been shown to have antiviral and antifungal properties, which have been attributed mainly to its antioxidant characteristics. And quercetin actually serves as the basis for many other flavonoids, including citrus flavonoids like rutin, quercitrin, and hesperidin. These other bioflavonoids differ from quercetin in that they have sugar molecules attached to the quercetin backbone. Quercetin is consistently the most active of the flavonoids in experimental studies, and there are quite a few medicinal plants that owe much of their activity to their high quercetin content. So quercetin works especially good as an inflammation modulator because of its direct inhibition of several initial processes of inflammation. So, for example, it inhibits both the manufacture and release of histamine and other allergic or inflammatory markers. In addition, quercetin exerts potent antioxidant activity and works well with vitamin C. There's an enzyme that is responsible for the conversion of glucose to sorbitol. It's called aldose reductase, and quercetin is actually a strong inhibitor of this. And why this is important is aldose reductase is an enzyme that is strongly implicated in the development of diabetic conditions like diabetic cataracts, neuropathy, and retinopathy. Okay, so first of all, to understand quercetin, you need to understand what flavonoids are. Flavonoids are a group of plant pigments that are largely responsible for the colors of most fruits and flowers. And flavonoids are actually exceptionally beneficial in the treatment and prevention of many health conditions. In fact, many of the medicinal actions of foods, plants, and other herbs are directly related to their flavonoid content. So there's actually over 4,000 flavonoid compounds that have been identified and classified but quercetin is definitely one of the primary flavonoids. So most of the studies done on quercetin have been done in vitro, and in this capacity, quercetin appears to be indicated in virtually all inflammatory and allergic conditions, including things like asthma, hay fever, rheumatoid arthritis, and even lupus, and also in diabetes. However, the primary shortcoming with quercetin is the lack of clinical studies and questionable absorptions, but there are ways to get around that too. There actually are some improved forms of quercetin that are available today that are substantially better absorbed than others, because for the longest time, researchers have noted that very little quercetin is absorbed intact with the majority of the oral dose, upwards of more than 50%, being excreted. So one of the main problems in studying the absorption of quercetin and other flavonoids is their breakdown by the bacteria in the colon. So one of the best absorbed forms that I've seen in the last several years is one that's known as EMIQ quercetin, which stands for enzymatically modified isoquercetin. And this form is readily available now in most health food stores, and it's at least 40 times better absorbed than regular quercetin. So you can get quercetin in powder and capsule form, and it's powerful enough on its own, but when you pair it with the pineapple enzyme bromelain, that actually enhances its function quite a bit. So bromelain itself exhibits anti-allergy and anti-inflammatory activity on its own, and also enhances the absorption of quercetin. So taking them together is quite beneficial. And often when you find them together, it's usually a one-to-one -one ratio or an equal proportion of each bromelain to quercetin. So there really is no recommended dose for quercetin, but uh, anywhere from 200 to 400 milligrams a few times a day is very beneficial, but I've seen it even as high as 500 to 1,000 milligrams per serving. Quercetin is very safe, even when consumed in very large quantities, like 2,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, and anywhere from 5 to 10 percent of the total diet for long periods of time. Many people report blood pressure benefits with quercetin, specifically in reducing blood pressure. 
even in people with stage one hypertension, which is blood pressure around like 148 over 96, who took around 700 milligrams of quercetin per day for up to 28 days. So there's been no observed change in people with pre-hypertension, but it is beneficial for those with chronically high blood pressure. Quercetin is even beneficial for those with chronic prostatitis. Quercetin even seems to suppress the action of tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is a mediator of acute and chronic inflammation that's involved in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, and even irritable bowel syndrome. So one general caution about quercetin is, even though it's generally very safe to take and doesn't have any side effects, it may, however, alter the effectiveness of antibiotics, especially those of the fluoroquinoline class, which usually end in the suffix floaxin, because quercetin actually binds to the bacterial site at which the antibiotic acts. For women, quercetin may raise estradiol levels, but beyond that, quercetin consumption is safe and effective. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.